Gauss's mathematics has touched many parts of the mathematical world, but I'm going to just choose one of them, a fun one, imaginary numbers. In the 16th and 17th century, European mathematicians imagined the square root of minus one and gave it the symbol i. They didn't like it much, but it solved equations that couldn't be solved any other way. Imaginary numbers have helped us to understand radio waves, to build bridges and aeroplanes. They're even the key to quantum physics, the science of the subatomic world. They've provided a map to see how things really are. But back in the early 19th century, they had no map, no picture of how imaginary numbers connected with real numbers. Where is this new number? There's no room on the number line for the square root of minus one. I've got the positive numbers running out here, the negative numbers running here. The great step is to create a new direction of numbers, perpendicular to the number line. And that's where the square root of minus one is. Gauss was not the first to come up with this two-dimensional picture of numbers, but he was the first person to explain it all clearly. He gave people a picture to understand how imaginary numbers worked. And once they developed this picture, their immense potential could really be unleashed. Morgan, uh... During his lifetime, Gauss lent his support to very few mathematicians. But one exception was another of Göttingen's mathematical giants, Bernhard Riemann. His father was a minister, and he would remain a sincere Christian all his life. But Riemann grew up a shy boy who suffered from consumption. His family was large and poor, and the only thing the young boy had going for him was an excellence at maths. That was his salvation. Many mathematicians like Riemann had very difficult childhoods, were quite unsociable, and their lives seemed to be falling apart. It was mathematics that gave them a sense of security. Riemann spent much of his early life in the town of Lüneburg in northern Germany. This was his local school, built as a direct result of Humboldt's educational reforms in the early 19th century. Riemann was one of its first pupils. The head teacher saw a way of bringing out the shy boy. He was given the freedom of the school's library. It opened up a whole new world to him. One of the books he found in there was a book by the French mathematician Legendre, all about number theory. His teacher asked him how he was getting on with it. He replied, I've understood all 859 pages of this wonderful book. It was a strategy that obviously suited Riemann because he became a brilliant mathematician. And one of his most famous contributions to mathematics was a lecture in 1852 on the foundations of geometry. In the lecture, Riemann first described what geometry actually was and its relationship with the world. He then sketched out what geometry could be, a mathematics of many different kinds of space, only one of which would be the flat Euclidean space in which we appear to live. He was just 26 years old. Was it received well? I mean, did people recognize the revolution? There was no way that people could actually make these ideas concrete. Right. That only occurred 50 years after this, 60 years after this, when, with Einstein. With Einstein. So, yes. so this is the beginning, really, of um, the revolution which e ends with Einstein's relativity. Exactly, yes. yes. Riemann's mathematics changed how we see the world. Suddenly, higher dimensional geometry appeared. The potential was there from Descartes, but it was Riemann's imagination that made it happen. Well, he began... Uh, without putting any restriction on the dimensions whatsoever. This was something that was actually uh, quite new okay. in his way of thinking about things. And somebody like Bolyai was really thinking about you know, new geometries, but new two-dimensional geometries. New two-dimensional geometries. Right. Riemann then uh, broke away from all the, the, the limitations of two or three dimensions and began to think in, in higher dimensions. Right. And this was quite new. Yeah. Multi-dimensional space is at the heart of so much mathematics done today. In geometry, number theory, and several other branches of maths, Riemann's ideas still perplex and amaze. He died, though, in 1866. He was only 39 years old. Today, the results of Riemann's mathematics are everywhere. 
hyperspace is no longer science fiction, but science fact. In Paris, they've even tried to visualize what shapes in higher dimensions might look like. Just as the Renaissance artist Piero would have drawn a square inside a square to represent a cube on the two-dimensional canvas, the architect here at La Défense has built a cube inside a cube to represent a shadow of the four-dimensional hypercube. It is with Riemann's work that we finally have the mathematical glasses to be able to explore such worlds of the mind. It's taken a while to make these glasses fit, but without this golden age of mathematics, from Descartes to Riemann, there would be no calculus, no quantum physics, no relativity, none of the technology we use today. But even more important than that, their mathematics blew away the cobwebs and allowed us to see the world as it really is, a world much stranger than we ever thought.